Hi everybody, welcome to another Garmin 430 video. This time I'm going to uh, demonstrate for you that your Garmin 430 does fly great circle tracks when it's in uh, leg mode. Now you should be aware that all of your Victor Airways and Jet Airways do represent great circle tracks. So for this particular example, we're, uh, we're departing Calgary en route to uh, somewhere out east and we're going to be flying along Jet 512 which you can uh, see here on the map. Now as the video begins we're just approaching the Calgary VOR and uh, then we're going to uh, depart outbound towards uh, Saskatoon and we can see from the chart that uh, the outbound track is 059er. Uh, and uh, so if we bring our flight plan up here, we can see that the Garmin has determined that the outbound track is 058, and that uh, small one degree difference isn't uh, going to excite us too much, so we're, we're pretty happy uh, to set off from the Calgary VOR on a track of 058. But if we look ahead on the map, we see it uh, at the other end, the Saskatoon VOR, we're supposed to be coming inbound on the 248 degree radial and if you do the math on that that means our course would be 068 degrees it's almost a 10 degree turn somewhere along this route so how exactly is the Garmin going to handle it so we're approaching the uh, Calgary VOR now in real time and um, you can see the turn anticipation and we're getting the message to reset our course to 058. So we make the turn now and as we go past you'll see the active waypoint cycle to Saskatoon and the desired track change to 058. Okay, so that's exactly what we were expecting. Um, but now what I'm going to do is uh, just you know if we do this in real time it's going to take half an hour to get there and that'll be kind of boring so I'm going to time compress the next uh, 30 minutes into about two and a half minutes and uh, what I want you to do is keep an eye on the desired track here and see what happens over time so here we go now and a uh, little animation in the background there so you can keep track of where we are along the way remember it's a total of 275 miles and you can see the miles clicking by one every second or so. If you're noticing, the desired track's already changed to 059er. And uh, what we're expecting, of course, according to the map, is it should be 068 by the time we get to the far end of this airway. Okay, so you see it's already up to 60 degrees. And so as you fly along here, if you uh, have a manual HSI, you have to keep constantly updating your HSI. If you have EFIS, it would happen automatically. So it's already up to 61. We're not even quite halfway there, but we're just closing in on the halfway point here in another few seconds in our time compressed mode. So there's about halfway. You can see the uh, the airspace boundary coming up on the moving map and the desired track is up to 062 so it changed about uh, 5 degrees in the first half so it'll probably change another 5 degrees in the second half. Uh, that is how it works. So this phenomenon uh, of the track changing is called convergence. It uh, happens because the earth is not flat. You can consider this a little bit of proof that the earth is indeed a sphere. So in order to fly a great circle track, whenever you're eastbound, as we are here, you always have to change your heading to the right. And now as we are about uh, three quarters of the way there, we can see the desired track is already up to 64. And you're probably starting to have confidence that uh, it really is going to be 068 uh, by the time we get there. what I'll do is uh, just kick it out of time compression for just a second here so that I can show you the uh, the flight plan so I'll just kick it back into real time momentarily 
and you can see here if you're looking at the flight plan it now says 066. Remember this said uh, 058 when we first set off. Now it says 066. Okay, let's uh, go back to time compression and finish it out and see if it really is 068 when we get there. So 25 miles to go. 067. So, yep, it really is going to be 068 by the time we get there. So as we approach the station, you can see the time compression will just kick back into real time here. And uh, there you go. Okay, so that's it for this episode. See you again next time.